is a response to Thunderfoot and to his ignorance. The fool who wastes his time on internet trying to prove the non-existence of something he claims he does not believe in anyway. In his video, one video every Christian should watch, this man actually thinks he's bringing some arguments. I personally was very disappointed. So you call yourself a Christian? Yes, sir. Are you sure about that? Uh, let me think. Uh, uh, mm. uh, Yes. I mean, let's break this down. Okay, I mean, if uh, that will make you feel better. The minimum requirements to be a Christian is that you must believe the description within the Bible that Jesus Christ, that's Christ as in Christian, was the son of a mighty God. The minimum required. And you realized always by yourself? When your IQ reaches 50, you should sell. The minimum requirements to be a Christian is that you must believe the description within the Bible that Jesus Christ, that's Christ as in Christian, was the son of a mighty God. Wow, I mean, you really done some research there, Thunderfoot, I mean, that's impressive. Was the son of a mighty God. By the way, uh, you forgot about the Trinity. You know that, don't you? The whole thing is utterly contingent on the veracity of the Bible. Okay, I give you that. What is your point? So I have one question for you. Okay, please. Do you believe in witches, wizards and demons? Yes, I do. If you answered no to this question... But I answer yes. Then you're not really a Christian. My answer was yes. Because the biblical God that's the father of the Christ in Christian, directly instructs you, in the Bible, to kill witches and stone wizards. He does not instruct me to do that, because we are not under that law anymore. Acts 1 5 colon 5 But there rose out certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Acts 1 5 colon 6 and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Acts 1 5 colon 7 and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Acts 1 5 colon 8 and God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Acts 1 5 colon 9 and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Acts 1 5 colon 1 0 now therefore I tempt ye God, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Acts 1 5 colon 1 1 but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. If on the other hand you answered yes that you do believe in, which is wizards and demons. TF let me show you why you have made a fool of yourself. Let us search witchcraft on the internet. So you see, you do not have to be a Christian in order to believe in witches, wizards or even demons. Do you believe in witches, wizards and demons? I cannot see your point, sorry, no matter how much I have tried. You have no point. TF, do you have a point? 
So not only Christians believe in witches and witchcraft, as for demons, to believe in them is implicit for believing in God. If you try to prove the non-existence of evil, you reach the same kind of arguments as in the case of the existence of God, and considering that those arguments have not worked to disprove God, it seems logical they will not work to disprove the devil. So, it is illogical to engage in a dispute where you try to prove the non-existence of God by trying to deny the existence of the devil. Now, as far as witches are concerned, there is no need for any bit of faith to believe in witches. A simple search on Google is enough. I wonder what DPR Jones would say about this. So my question is this. When you have such a mass of information at your fingertips, why are you and others so lazy that you won't take advantage of it? Is it really that you find it too much effort? Or is it because you don't want to find out the truth in case, as a consequence, you have to change your opinions? Or is it because you simply don't care what the truth is and will carry on spouting your bullshit regardless? Whatever the reason, it is intellectually lazy and pathetic that's just common sense. There are shops where you could buy artifacts for witchcraft, clubs, courses. Even you, TF, can become a great wizard. Look, a few things which you certainly need. And of course, perhaps the most important. A hocus pocus wishing box. Now if TF wants to become a great wizard, he needs a magic wand. And there are enough nice people here on YouTube that can teach you, TF, how to build your first magic wand. And for this video, what we're doing the wand. Now before I show you any examples or any of that. I cannot encourage you enough to think outside the box when you're building your own tools. So I just wanted to show you my wand. Okay, I make my own wands. I did buy a couple, but after a while I just wanted to make my own. So Thunderfoot has a delusion about witches. He thinks they do not exist. On behalf of Expert Village, I'm Caroline and I'm here to tell you about witchcraft. Now, about what difference is between the Bible and the Lord of the Rings. If on the other hand you answered yes, that you do believe in witches, wizards and demons, then I have to ask you the most pertinent question of all. How can you tell if Harry Potter is a work of fact or fantasy? You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> First, we must have a historical background, a geographic location, a number of documents, some archaeological sites. A number of scholars. historical and geographical context. TF, do you know where was the first strong community of Christians? Do you know where we were called for the first time, Christians? Acts 11, 26 and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass, 
that whole year they assembled themselves with the Kirk, and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Acts 11:27, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. All this happened in Antioch. So let's take Antioch as an example. You know that we have a complete list from the first Christian fathers up to this day for the Christian community of Antioch. The first head of Christian community of Antioch was, according to the Bible, Apostle Peter. After him followed Saint Evodius. After him came Ignatius, a disciple of Apostle John. This is already upside the atheist little box. Those are characters who have lived, worked and have interacted with other personalities of the time. And we have a similar list with all the others first communities of Christians. But about all this, maybe in another video. The ability to distinguish fact from fantasy is an important one. 